Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into polar coordinates and now look at example 11, which looks at graphing some curves that are called, uh, I believe it's called Limacons or Limasons. I'm not exactly sure the pronunciation of it. If you know uh, what it is, I believe it's French, just comment below. I'm, uh, for now, I'm just going to call it Limacons. Yeah, I looked up uh, what the pronunciation was. It was just a variation. I'm just going to call it Limacons. And also look at another thing that's hard to pronounce, Cochley, I believe. And also the Archimedean screw, which just uh, randomly came up when I was writing up this video. It's pretty interesting. So let's just jump right in. So the example states, investigate the family of polar curves given by R equals 1 plus C times sine theta, and we're asked, how does this shape change as C changes? Yes, yeah, so C is just a constant. Uh, these curves are called limacons after a French word for snail because of the shape of the curves for certain values of C. So yeah, that's from my calculus book. So then I just, uh, uh, what's it called? I went up on Google Translate, translated, so limacon, uh, it goes French to English, Cochlea. So then I searched up what Cochlea was. And this is from this website, uh, this random website that I believe did a project on Cochlea. So the Cochlea, what is the Cochlea? Uh, the Cochlea is an integral part of hearing. The human he ear is separated into three main parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. And I'll show you that was a pretty cool diagram here. The outer ear con uh, contains the visible parts of the ear and moves along the channel, collecting sound waves and passing them to the middle ear. At the middle ear, the sound waves hit the typionic membrane or eardrum, which vibrates the three tiny ear bones. And these bones react and transfer the sound uh, into a wave vibration that is transferred to the cochlea. And the cochlea is part of the inner ear and is described as a bony structure filled with, uh, yeah, filled with fluid and thousands of hair cells that react to the vibrations from the middle ear. The hair cells are each linked to a certain frequency and when that frequency is made, the hair cell sends a nerve signal to the brain and figure one shows a representation of the parts of the ear. The cochlea is located on the right past the three ear bones. So yeah, hopefully you <laughs> digested all that. So there's a cochlea, yeah, it looks like some sort of snail there, as, as explained above where, um, yeah, limacon uh, was stated as a French word for snail. If you do, go put in the Google Translator, it just goes to cochlea, and as you can see, it looks like a snail, part of the inner ear, filled with fluid and hair, uh, hair cells that basically, if you have this is the outer ear over here. You have the sound coming in across here. There's an eardrum hits this, and then that's the middle ear, I believe. And there's those three ear bones. Yeah, those are the three super sensitive ear bones. And then that sound gets picked up by these hair for, uh, hair cells, and yeah, inside the cochlea, and then that gets transferred as a, a signal, electrical signal, goes to the brain or or here. I'm not sure. Yes, this part goes across there. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. I just wanted to include that because this was one of the best diagrams I saw when I was searching up uh, this topic. And also as seen in figure one, the cochlea has a snail-like structure with an unrolled length of three centimeters, so unrolled. So it's about somewhere like three centimeters long. So it's uh, yeah, pretty significant, but yeah, still small. So now uh, then I went up and just use the, uh, yeah, just the Google definition uh, to see what cochlea is defined as. So it's a noun, cochlea, plural, or yeah, uh, plural is cochlea, or I believe it's uh, the pronounced cochlea, or cochlea, I'm just going to call it cochlea. And the definition here is, is a spiral cavity of the inner ear contains the organ of corti, which produces nerve impulses in response to sound vibrations. And it was from Greek cochleas. And then it goes to Latin, cochlea, snail shell or screw. And then, uh, yeah, then, then basically in mid 16th century was used. Yeah, meaning snail shell or screw. So mid, mid 16th century used to denote spirals, objects such as a spiral staircase and an Archimedean screw. So from Latin, snail shell or screw from Greek, cochleas. Um, the current sense dates uh, from the late 17th century later. So the 17th century onwards became the 
uh, part of the ear. But before that, it was just for spiral objects that look like a snail. And then, yeah, so this Archimedean screw, I haven't heard of it before, so I searched it up. Here's from Wikipedia. The Archimedes screw, also called the Archimedean screw or screw pump, is a machine historically used for transferring water from a low-lighting body of water into irrigation ditches. Water is pumped by turning a screw-shaped surface inside a pipe, yeah, like this. This screw is uh, commonly attributed to Archimedes on the occasion of his visit to Egypt. This tradition may reflect only that the apparatus was unknown to the Greeks before Hellenistic uh, times and was introduced in Archimedes' lifetime by, an unknown, by unknown Greek engineers. Some writers have suggested that the device may have been used in, uh, in Assyria some 350 years earlier, citation needed, etc. So here it is. Here's a nice uh, gif of it. I'm just going to click here. Yeah, so here is the Wikipedia page of it. I'm just going to click this, reset. And as you can see, it's, uh, let's click this and zoom out. Yeah, so it's uh, rotating around. And as you can see, the, the, uh, the water or fluid, whatever ha you have inside, gets pushed across, which is quite fascinating. So just, you just turn it and the stuff just keeps going. So that's how it looks like. Let's go back here. And look at some other uh, types, real-world examples here. So the Archimedes screw was operated by hand and could raise water efficiently. And now here is one here. The Archimedes screw in Husby, south of uh, Vaxo, Sweden. You have it right here. And it just you know, moves water across. You just rotate that screw. Quite uh, in ingenious. So here's the Archimedes screw diagram. As you can see, you could just turn that. Uh, and then you can have the water uh, yeah, just moving upwards using this uh, pretty neat little screw. Now here's a modern one. Here's some modern Archimedes screws could, yeah, which have replaced some of the windmills used to drain the polders at Kinderjerk and ne in the Netherlands. Not sure what that is. But anyways, here's some modern looking ones or some sewage or whatever. You can move that upwards. Pretty amazing. And now and, uh, here is the Archimedes screw as a form of art by Tony Gregg at the uh, Hertenbosch in the Netherlands. So this is some pretty cool stuff. You have the screw moving water all the way up and throws it up. And uh, it could be used for uh, other than just water. It's an Archimedes screw as seen on a combine harvester. And here you can move, I guess, uh, grass or whatever they're doing there. So yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. So now let's just look at the solution, and I've graphed these using the Desmos calculator. Let's just go back to refresh what the actual question was in this video, and I just got sidetracked by those other stuff, which is pretty cool. So this is the family of curves, R equals 1 plus C sine theta, called limicons, and now we're going to change. How does the shape change as C changes? So let's go and look at the shape. Let's scroll all the way here. Solution, the figures below show the graphs for various values of C. And I'm just going to make this smaller. So yeah, I just made these a bit smaller. So as you can see, R equals 1 plus C sine theta. Where if, if we have C is equal to 2.5, we get this shape like that. And, and yeah, I guess it could uh, be viewed as a snail or whatnot. Yeah, all right. So as you can see, it looks somewhat like a snail. Uh, I had to, <laughs> I just quickly searched up now to see uh, another a real life uh, snail shell to see how it looks like exactly. And you can see this one I got from this random site here. So it could it could be viewed somewhat as a if you continue that circle. Yeah, then it looks like the limacon, or I believe that actually it's called limason. Limason. I'm just gonna switch now to calling it. Limason, similar to like Garçon for man. Yeah, so I'm still not 100% sure if it's Limacon, uh, Limacon, Limacon, or Limason. I'm just going to call it Limason from now on. So yeah, here you could see that uh, Limason or that snail shaped across. I'm just going to continue this drawing on. Yeah, like this. All right. So if we continue it, yeah, it looks like a snail like that. Yeah, let's just erase it. So, and I have, and I've uh, put some from other values of C. But first, I'm going to do is click here and show you uh, just how it looks like on the calculator itself. So there you have it. And I'm going to do is I'm going to click projector mode, so it's a bit darker. 
let's hide the grid so it's a bit cooler like that so we're gonna hide the grid make it look like this and now what we'll do would I have it input it here in the Desmos calculator R equals one plus C sine theta and as you can see we have it here at C is 2.5 but what's cool here is you can press play and things just change quite amazing here so as you can see it's getting bigger and bigger and the C is getting yes, bigger and bigger and now it's going back down. Let's just speed this up and what happens when it starts to be negative. Once it's negative, it's, it, notice it's the exact same thing actually. All, all it's going to be doing is, is mirroring it on the bottom. Let's make this even like bigger. Negative 100 and to the 100 and let's press play. <laughs> Well, it's getting closer and closer. Yeah, this calculator is absolutely amazing. And now it's going down. Let's make it speed up. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see that, that's pretty amazing stuff. Slow it down. Let's go back to 10. This one, 10. And let's just press play. And yeah, there's the shape in smaller. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. So that's what it is and what I've done is I've taken uh, some images from that for specific values just to show you the difference. So when it's 2.5 you get the snail like shape and when it's 1.7 for example it gets a bit smaller uh, that inner circle there or inner circular shape. Now when it's 1 you get this shape across there and in fact this is from my example 7 video this is a cardioid example seven this is in fact a cardioid or a heart shaped which I've covered in my earlier video and this is where r equals to one plus this is just going to be sine theta I just double check yeah so it is sine not cosine like that because c is equal to one then when it's between that you have this like dimple shape so it's not sharp anymore this is a sharp point this one's not sharp once 1.5 it's getting like pretty much flat then 0.2 notice a slight shift across here it looks like a circle but it's not perfectly a circle but then when you have it zero uh, when r when c is equal to zero r equals one plus well uh, zero times by sine that's just zero so r equals one radius is just one this is just a circle so this is a circle like that r equals one and just goes perfectly around when you have negative two it's just a shift down this way notice that was a shift like that this one's a shift upwards so we're just going to go downwards and now the exact same thing is happening but on the reverse now you have it like that uh, point there now you have the sharp point across this is this is also a cardioid uh, this one's upside down now now it actually looks more like a heart because it's flipped to the right way because number Greek uh, cardio cardioid is Greek for heart now when you go negative two you have the reverse snail uh, shell upside down so basically for C is greater than one there's a loop that decreases in size as C decreases when C equals one loop disappears and the curve becomes a cardioid that we sketch in example seven for C is between one and one half the cardioids cusp so it's not pointing anymore smoothed out and becomes a dimple and like always when we come up across random topics just want to <laughs> learn more about it so dimple here on Wikipedia would uh, dimple also known as a uh, jellison or something is a small natural indentation in the flesh on on a part of the human body most notably in the cheek or on the chin uh, cheek dimples when present show up when a person makes a facial expression a chin dimple is a small line on the chin that stays on the chin without making any facial expressions. Dimples may appear and disappear over an extended period. And here I just searched up a dimple and there is the dimple there. So yeah. So anyways, getting off topic, let's go back into the math. So when C decreases from one half to zero, the limason or limason, I'm just going to call it limason from now on. Yeah, so when it's uh, between half and, and zero, the limason is shaped like an oval and you can even see that over 
uh, here. So yeah, this one's like an oval shape. This isn't perfectly circular. This one is almost perfectly circular. So in between, it's, it is like an oval shape. It's not perfectly circular. So let's go back. And basically, this oval becomes more and more cir circular as c approaches 0. And when c equals 0, the curve is just a circle, r equals 1. The remaining parts of the, of the above figures that I show shows that as c becomes negative, yeah, the shapes change in reverse order. So they're just a mere reflection across. In fact, these curves are reflections about the horizontal axis of the corresponding curves with positive c. So yeah, they're just horizontal uh, reflections. In other words, this is the mirror from the up and down, the exact same the mirror across. So note, I may go over an analytical proof of different, uh, yeah, of the different types of shapes formed by changing the values of C in a later video. So stay tuned because what I showed was visually how it is. But I'm going to show you. Uh, I may show later, uh, depending on you know, the topics I cover, if I'm going to go over an analytical solution. Yeah, without just uh, the easy uh, calculator of visually using that one. So. So stay tuned for that if I end up doing it, which I probably will. Anyways, uh, so that's all for today. Hope you learned about uh, dimples and <laughs> and other stuff. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Hope you learned um, from this pretty interesting video on lima limasons or limacons or limacons. If you know the exact pronunciation or the most used one, just comment below. Especially if you speak French, etc. And also, uh, hopefully, enjoy this little uh, insight on Archimedean screws which is pretty interesting, pretty cool bit of engineering, uh, ingenuity over there. Very interesting. And also this uh, cochlea or cochlea, let's call it cochlea, which is pretty interesting. Snail-like shape there inside the inner ear. If we learned a bit more about the, uh, <laughs> the human ear. Anyways, that is all for today. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the video uh, description below, put a link there, as well as I'll, up I'll upload this entire video notes at Steemit, so follow me at MES, upload that shortly after I upload this video. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math e